Oh, it's time. It's time to say goodbye to FC24. Been a wild ride, kid. But what's that I can see on the horizon? Something new and shiny. But before we ride off into the sunset, the sliders that we've been using in the Sorrento career mode. And Jesus Christ, we've scored some bloody scorchers, haven't we? You lot have been asking for an update. <laughs> I'm not one to disappoint, am I? So for the final time, here's the settings and sliders to use in FC24 before we say, It's been a long day without you, my friend. And I'll tell you all about it when I see you again. We've come a long way from where we began. And I'll tell you all about Right then, into the sliders. Now, as always, these can be chopped and changed. Now, if you keep the base sliders the way they are, but maybe change a, a, a couple of the values, maybe one, two, three, maximum of five, then, like I said, you'll get the base game as similar to mine as possible. Uh, but... If you find that, I don't know, the pass error is too high, but the first touch control is is too low, etc, etc. You can swap and change them a little bit. You can increase or decrease, but not by too much because it starts to change the whole feel of the game. Now, what we're going to do, we're going to go through the user sliders. Then we're going to go through to the computer sliders. Now, a few couple, couple important changes, actually, I do feel from the last set of sliders. Um, and the first one is going to be the sprint speed. I had a couple of people come to me last set of sliders and say the game feels too quick, uh, it was too slick, etc, etc. And I've got to be honest, after playing with, with the Sorrento career mode, obviously the career mode that I'm going through at the minute, playing with some of the the lower rated players, I thought, nah, no, nah, it feels about right. Look, I tried it with uh, a couple other teams and things like that, but trying it with Sorrento and playing with the most, most of the time with Sorrento, um, I did think, I, uh, I did think it was the right speed. Now, as those players have got better and we've bought better players and we've gone up the division, I'm thinking, yeah, it might be a little bit too quick. So I've lowered the sprint speed, but what I've done is upped the acceleration. Now, I did see um, in uh, Matt 10 sliders, I do base a lot of my sliders on his, uh, so shout out Matt 10. He will be linked down in the description. Um, but when I'm looking at his sliders, normally he says that slower sprint speed is better for gameplay, but then the acceleration side of things allows the defenders to get back into position. And I've been seeing that with some of my crosses, um, my attackers have been slightly outpacing the defenders as they're getting back into position. So uh, some of the crosses may be a little bit overpowered. So I've tried, I've tried the 51 sprint speed, uh, the, the acceleration, sorry, uh, and we'll see how that goes. Now shot error, uh, we've upped it slightly for us. Uh, and for the CPU, we've downgraded it slightly. So we have more shot error, they have slightly less shot error. Uh, I've been scoring bangers anyway. If you've been watching the Sorrento career mode, you will see the amount of absolute stunners that we've been scoring. Uh, so it still does give you that opportunity to score those bangers, but actually, realistically, it's still going to be pretty difficult to, to, to score most shots, to be honest. And especially with the, the, the goalkeeper settings that we'll look at in a second, uh, you'll see that they can kind of counteract each other. So it, I think that worked perfectly. Pass error, we've downgraded it. Uh, I did find that, uh, especially with uh, some of my better players, uh, just normal ground passes and some of the manual passes, and we'll look at the gameplay settings in a second, uh, it was just shocking. And there was no need for it to be shocking. We were playing forward passes rather than like swiveling on them and stuff like that. And they were just going awry. So I've downgraded it slightly. And I've done exactly the same for the CPU as well. Only by a point. Um, but again, we'll see how it goes. At the minute for me, this is working perfectly. Shot speed, we'll keep it at 50. Pass speed, we're keeping that at 40 as well. We've talked about it in the past. Uh, I think that just slows your game down a little bit. It just works for me personally. Injury frequency, all the way up there in 85. 
Uh, again, some people have asked me before, why the hell is it so high? Uh, I think it's just just kind of one of them realistic things. Like people get knocks, people get little sprains and and twist their ankle and things like that, or get a few impact injuries and have to come off. Uh, but the severity is so low, and I've actually downgraded this time because. Again, in Sorrento career mode, I've had like four key players out for seven, eight weeks. Some of them a couple of months, and I just think it's a little bit too unrealistic. Uh, keeper ability, we've downgraded as Bellini that I'm playing with in Sorrento career mode. Incredible, the geezer is. But some of the saves that he's been making, a little bit too outrageous. Uh, so I've downgraded that slightly, but I have actually upgraded uh, the CPU as well, only by a point, I think, or maybe two. Um, but I think uh, they just deserved a bit of an upgrade. Uh, I like it to be a challenge, and there's been a, a couple of times when I've slotted a ball into the corner, and I thought, mm, keeper, you probably should be saving that. Uh, I, the one that I can remember was Sanko, uh, I think in the last episode, uh, picks the ball up and whips one and it looks like it's going right in the corner it ends up going straight down the middle the keeper, the keeper still doesn't get anywhere near it marking i've upped that i think by one or two um and it, it, i think it's exactly the same uh for the cpu as well yeah upped it to 51 uh again just means that you, your players get marked a little bit tighter doesn't give them that ability to to run off their defenders as easily you still do it but not as easy Run frequency then, um, 20, I, I think we've kept it quite low, I even might have downgraded this a little bit uh, because I've been finding that some of the uh, some of the left backs and right backs were maybe bombing on a little bit too much, uh, I've still got, I, I love using my, my left and right back which is why it's so important that I had two really attacking left and right backs uh, in the Sorrento career mode and again Spencer and uh, Burrows, two incredible players. Uh, but the run frequency maybe was a little bit too high, so I think I've downgraded it slightly, or I've kept it the same, uh, and I've just manipulated the in-game kind of uh, formation settings and things like that. But again, it's just one of those things, if you if you up it a little bit, you're just going to get your, your, your players making more frequent runs rather than you telling them to make those runs, uh, which is, is kind of one of them things. You feel it. If you like it, keep it as. If not, up it a little bit. Uh, line height then for the user I don't think I've changed many of these but again how high or low the defensive line position themselves I like to play quite a, a, a deep line especially in the formation that I use but this kind of almost counteracts it uh, which I know sounds a little bit a bit strange but I think it's important to have this quite high because uh, it makes sure that your defenders will step up even if you've got them uh, in your formation sitting quite low they do step up and uh, especially when you need them to to nick balls off players and things like that uh, all i'm saying is when you're playing against ac milan just play the lowest line physically possible uh, line length then so uh, let me just remember length of the pitch so from goal to goal uh, I think this is really uh, really realistic you you find in a lot of football games especially Premier League games and your, your, your top leagues then the the game is going to be compressed into that middle area of the pitch and it's quite short when you actually watch it uh, so I think 35 is, is, is perfect for that. Uh, we'll go over the, the computer ones in a second. Line width then. So uh, from side to side, from uh, dugout to, to, to fan, say. Uh, again, it's quite neutral, 48, just a little bit more compact. Uh, you could even drop this, drop this shorter. I quite like it shorter, but I'm going to stick with it 48 because I think that's a good base level. Uh, but if you want it to be even more realistic, maybe, uh, I would probably even drop that down to, to maybe 45 or even 40. Uh, fullback positioning then. So, like I said before, uh, it decreases or increases the amount that your fullbacks will push up. So, with having that kind of uh, run frequency down, uh, but having them quite tucked up quite high, uh, means that they don't bomb on as much, uh, but they're still pressed quite high. Do you know what I mean? 
so again, they're not making runs forward necessarily, but when you're playing around with your centre backs, uh, I like it that when I'm in possession, I want my centre backs uh, to be uh, quite quite close together with your centre defence and midfielder dropping in almost between them or playing that little triangle. Uh, and then your left and right backs, I want them, I want them high, not necessarily running on, but I want them to be an option really, really far wide and also quite high up the pitch. And then, first touch control. Now I've been playing about this a little bit. I think we had it up around 70 last time. I've actually decreased it to 60. Uh, personally, that's just because it felt better for me. Um, I, I was uh, a little bit frustrated uh, with the first touch control previously. Uh, so I've dropped it down. Uh, not necessarily to make it easier, just to make it a little bit more fun. I want to, I want to have fun while I'm playing these games, and I've done exactly the same with uh, with the CPU. And I think that has actually made it a little bit harder for me, uh, a little bit more challenge, a little bit more fun. So again, it's just one of them things you try it around with. If you're feeling that maybe it's a little bit too unrealistic and and the balls sticking to those players. Just drop it to 70 again. But at the minute, I'm liking it at 60, so I'm keeping it there for now. Now, as we go in the CPU settings, uh, we've already kind of flicked over and had a look at them, but we'll just go back through them now. So, sprint speed at 8, acceleration at 51. We've already talked about that a little bit. It's when the AI is controlling your, your defenders and getting them back into position. Uh, downgraded shot error. So, some of the, sh some of the shots are more more accurate um, and also our goalkeeper is a little bit more uh, less effective uh, at actually saving them uh, pass error 55 I think that's a slight yeah it's a slight decrease on our one so making it a little bit harder for us keeping shot speed is the same pass speed exactly the same we want them to, it want you want it to be a, 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 a nice game you don't want it to be absolutely ridiculous where they're popping Popping balls all around left, right, and centre of you. Injury frequency we've already talked about, and it's exactly the same for us. But we've upgraded their goalkeeper. We've made their goalkeeper a little bit better. Uh, and again, it's just one of those things. It makes it more fun for me. I want to see their goalkeepers pulling out saves that are absolutely unreal. But also, when I do score one of them bangers, I want it to be earned. I want it to feel so good because we've scored an incredible goal and let's face it the Sanko goal that I scored in the last episode of Sorrento if you haven't watched it go back and watch it now get on get off this leave this come back to this go and watch my Sanko goal against Juve Coppa Italia semi-final to to win it to go to take us through it's freaking incredible it's probably one of the best goals I've scored this year marking 51 Exactly the same as ours. Uh, run frequency, I've already talked through this. We're making it 20. Again, we don't want them to be bombing on out of position constantly. We want it to be quite a methodical, like a chess game, basically. Line height is going to be 62. And then your line length is going to be 35. Again, really nice and compact in that midfield. Uh, line width, 48. Still keeping it quite, quite neutral. Um, but again, if you, wanna, if you want them to... Um, uh, push over uh, and again you, you'll see this in, in, in normal football as well when you've got that, that trigger press uh, and uh, swapping sides and things like that but again for me eight, uh, 48 at the minute is working fine full back positioning quite high again we want them to be causing us problems in attack uh, but then also, also tracking back which is again while the acceleration and while the run frequency is, is so important. So making sure that they can track back and get into position is important. And then I've already talked about the first touch control. Still keeping it at 60. Uh, but like I said, if you feel that the game is too quick, I will just knock this up to 70. Uh, between 60 and 70 is a big difference. Um, but I would always go, you've got to change the user sliders and the CPU sliders to whatever it is. So if you're keeping it at 16 to make the game a little bit more fluid, a little bit less frustrating, then go for that. But if you want it to be up there in, in 70 as well, that, that can be. But I would also say as well that if you're going to keep it at 60, 
you're gonna have to think about your gameplay settings a little bit and most importantly you're gonna have to think about your passing now for me I'm keeping them on these so uh, through ball assistance I like it to be semi uh, I like it to be through ball assistance I like it to be manual uh, I've been finding that the the semi assisted is far too easy and when I'm on a break I don't want it to be super super easy I want there to be still some sort of right I don't know it's it's two on three um, or three on two sorry and uh, I've got an opportunity to sling the ball over to my uh, to my uh, winger on the other side but actually I'm gonna have to really think about this through ball because I want it to be in front of them I want them to run onto it but I also uh, need to consider how much weight I'm putting on it and stuff like that and when it's semi you don't have to think about any of that stuff but the lob through pass I think is too hard when it is uh, when it is manual so keeping it at semi is nice ground pass assistance I find it so frustrating when it's on manual so semi it's gonna be cross assistance oh my god don't even get me started with crosses this season I've circled through every single one of these assisted it's just crap. Manual, way too hard. It just never goes on, on target. So I'm keeping it at semi as well. And then your lob pass assistance, this should always be on manual. Um, if you're playing on semi, you're cheat coding it, mate. Get it on manual. It's so important. But this is why the through ball assistance being on manual, lob pass being on semi, and that being on manual is why... I found it so frustrating when I've used uh, like the 70 uh, first touch control. So why I've downgraded it to 60 is because I'm using manual on some of these and semi. None of them are going to be assisted. Okay, but if you're using any of them being assisted, I'd probably say push it up to that 70 mark. Okay. Now uh, these are all staying the same. Shot assistance needs to be precision. I can't say it louder for people in the back. Precision shooting this year is amazing. Doesn't matter if your your, your shot error is on a hundred. You'll still have the opportunity if you're good enough and you're putting it in the right areas to score bangers. Precision shooting has been such a game changer for me this this year. Again, like I said, louder for people in the back. Get it on precision. All of the other stuff is going to be exactly the same. Uh, if you've watched any of my other sliders videos, they're all the same, mate. So again, I'm just going to cycle through them, but you, you can see them. You can you can look with your own eyes. And if I'm going too quick, suck your mum, pause it. Do you know what I mean? Don't, I, I ain't your dad. Camera settings then. Um... I've got to be honest, I don't see why anyone wants to know my camera settings. I think they're a bit shit. I'll just use it so that I can see most of the pitch all the time. But people have asked. So um, all of this stuff I don't use on multiplayer and stuff like that. I only use single player. So again, it's it's all the same. Uh, the only time that you'll ever kind of need it probably is when you're playing player career modes. But even when I did that, I uh, I used it on, on the legacy uh, camera as well. So... Who cares? Height 16, zoom 3, uh, side so, bar, side focus 9, and then ball tracking speed 0. Penalty area zoom 3, uh, and then yeah, don't don't mess with all the app stuff. Uh, and definitely turn that off because it's crap. Um, and I think that's about it, geezers. So, if you've enjoyed these sliders, if you're going to use them, please let me know. Uh, I love having conversations about my sliders in the comment section. So please drop a message down there. Tell me if they're working for you, if they're not working for you. What have you found? What works for you? Uh, honestly, I could not tell you. I can't tell you how much I love having conversations about sliders. And I know that sounds frigging boring as hell. But that's the kind of geezer I am, do you know what I mean? So, if you have enjoyed it, guys, make sure that you drop a like right now. Make sure that you go over and have a look at some of my career modes as well. Like you can see in the background, uh, on the, the right-hand side of this video, you'll see the Sorrento career mode uh, that's going on at the bit. Uh, at the minute, you'll see all of the gameplay with all of the sliders that I'm using. 
So go and have a look at that. I think we're on episode four now. Uh, so you've got four episodes to go and watch. That's about two hours worth of content. Absolute crispy, creamy content. So go and have a look at that stuff. Go and have a look at my other rebuilds as well. Make sure that you drop a like on those videos and comment as well telling me that you came from a sliders video because that's always nice to hear as well. But as always, geezers, it's much love from me. I will see you next weekend, actually, for episode five of Sorrento. Uh, and yeah, it's much love for me. I'll see you in a bit. And, and peace.